and uh, so the film almost didn't happen because of that and um, um, and that's when uh, Vicky uh, arrived in the story because I had seen her in Phantom Thread and uh, from the very first moment I saw her face on screen and as soon as the film starts I kind of fell in love uh, with her and, and wanted to, I mean it was pretty immediate and I didn't know she was talking French or anything about her. It was the first time I saw her, but like many directors did, I think I fell in love with her in that film. But I, I wasn't going to make the film with her because I was going to make the film with Greta Gerwig, but then Greta left the project. So when that happened, it was, it, we were facing really big questions with my producers, but it, it took me literally uh, 24 hours to decide that uh, uh, I wanted to, contact Vicky and see if she was uh, uh, available. And it's not only a matter of how great I thought she was in, in at Phantom Fred and about like how good I think she's as an actress because there are other actors where things are. I mean, the reason why you want so much to work with an actress can not only be because you think she's great, or, or, although it's part of why, but it's also about the match that, that there is between this person and you and, and if you can project your story or your character on her, on him. And, and for me, with Vicky, it wasn't only because she was uh, so amazing in that film, but it was also because I could really see her as a director. I thought she had, there was something about the balance of uh, Delicacy, vulnerability, but also strength and determination that she that emanates from her, that really felt exactly to be at the right place to play that character uh, of a young uh, director looking for herself. And I was lucky that uh, Vicky accepted uh, quite uh, quickly, we can say, to be part of this project that came to the island and join us just a couple of weeks later. Vicky, do you have anything to add to what Samia was saying about you and um, about... Um, I do feel, I, I see the personally as an audience member, I see a connection and it seems like an obvious choice, but uh, as an actress, who come from a different angle, like, was it intimidating or like, weird to play a film director in front of a film director that is sort of her but not her? And did Mia give you enough freedom to create like, a different character, maybe? Um, I think it's, because uh, you ask, was it intimidating to ask a film director in front of a film director? I think is always the same leap into the unknown, like it's always intimidating or scary, like because you go and you make yourself naked and open and you're ready to be eaten, you know, like it's, you never know if it's going to work or you don't, mostly don't even know what you're doing. I never know what I'm doing. Uh, I guess something that knows. Um, so I, I wasn't thinking of that too much. Um, which would have been wrong, I think, if I would have thought of it too much, and I'm now, in a way, her, and she's looking at me being her, you know. If anything, I was trying to imagine that no one is looking at me, except for the ghost of Bergman on me, the sheep and the stone. Um, so yeah, I didn't, but to, to, to um, make the movie was easy because I, I was myself also a fan of her work, which is funny because when I first saw her, her first film, I was then not thinking I know I would ever be an actress in movies ever. I was very shy, like really. Yeah. Um, I would have thought of myself if I would be anything, I would be the decoration, you know, the uh, background. And as a real like audience member, I saw her film, and I remember coming out and telling my friend. Wow, I can see the director behind the film. Like I could see that one person had done all these decisions, and to me, it seemed crazy that actually one brain had done all these decisions that all seemed right to me. And she could have been like, 
someone who had done like a thousand films, or I didn't know if that she was so young, and it was the second, not first um, feature. Um, so when I saw her name in the email, I, I was like, oh, it's this woman. <laughs> so it was, it was kind of easy to want to do it. But then it's interesting, like, like in a movie, because I have children, it was trouble, like, you know, because she, I got this, and it was a few weeks into shooting when I was not supposed to work, but supposed to be with the kids. So the phone call, you know, it was like, um, so, <clears throat> I think I have to go to Sweden. What? <laughs> you were supposed to not work? Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> Now, would you like to talk about your experience working on the film since you came at a completely different department of the Kiddias? Um, and I think you were familiar with Neil's uh, work already. Um, yeah, I had actually seen all your films. So when I got the, the request, uh, I just dropped everything I had in my hands uh, before I read the script. But I, I didn't tell you, I think. When I replied, I had already uh, read it, but uh, I, think, um, I think that the script should have been really, really bad for me to to reject <laughs> an offer from you, because I was such a big fan. Um, um, I want to pick up on something that, that you said, Vicky, and I also, also want to compliment you, because you have a, a way of, of acting that has something of a mystery to it. There's something mysterious about your way of acting. And that kind of helps. There are so many transitions between fiction and reality in this film. And at some point you have this, you almost feel a bit dizzy. You don't really know what what is fiction and what is reality. And I think that your character, your way of playing the character helps um, makes the, those transitions feel more organic for uh, the viewer. And, and also share what you say about acting is uh, deep down, you should never really know what you're searching for. I mean, I, I can prepare a scene for, for a, a very long time, but I know that I should always stay open to something. I, I stay open for the un, unknown. And that's really, uh, I think that's part of our job, to, to constantly uh, search for something we don't really know what it is. And because that's, that's some, sometimes where the magic might be. Um, but my experience shooting this movie was fantastic because everybody, everyone who hasn't been to Florida should book a trip. Don't say that. No, I should, you should just, not go. Just before you should not go. <laughs> but it's uh, it's um, in this film that the 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 vibe and the atmosphere of this place is very beautifully captured by the way you by your mise en scène and and the cinematography, so that you can really sense the the, the beauty of the the landscape, of the light, and how inspiring that, that might be for uh, a visual artist, you know, a, a filmmaker is a, a visual artist. And, uh, and that's something, the, the minute you, you go from Gotland to Porto, the landscape shifts. So, I mean, Gotland is much more lush and, and green, uh, but when you get to Porto, uh, the, the colors are different. And you can immediately sense that. And that was uh, very inspiring. So it's obviously inspiring for actors and for directors. Were you not at all intimidated about working on that island? Because it's like a both a way of like reverence for Bergman, but also a way to just like not make fun of him. I mean, there's some lines that, but you know, you have to find a line where between admiration and between finding your own voice. So it, it's only an intimidating place to, to work. Yes, I, I still don't know how come I wasn't uh, more scary. 
and how come I wasn't more intimidated? It's still a mystery even to me that I wasn't. And I think, but I think it's part of um, the way I write my films that I, uh, when I feel the need or desire to express something, write about something, I think it makes me blind to all the risks I'm taking. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and quite often when I start working on a film, there is a moment where I'm thinking, this is really a bad idea, you should really not do this. Like making a film on forum, which is so much related to Bergman, and call it Bergman Island, I mean, rationally, it's the one thing you don't want to do, you know? <laughs> Especially when you're a young director, it's like so unconscious, you know? And, and, and I know at some point, I, I, I'm not stupid, so at some point I, I become aware of that. But the thing is, my, my desire to do the film is too strong, so I overcome this, and then I, I let it on the side, and I'm, I'm like, working like this, like, I guess, uh, yeah, I, 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 I tend have blinders to. on. Thank you. <laughs> and, and that saves me, I think. Otherwise, I would not have made Father of My Children, I would not have made Eden, I would not have made most of the uh, film about a philosophy teacher. I mean, all the films I made at some point, people told me, but how can you do that, you know? And, and so it's the same with Bergman Island. I think I was aware that it was risky, and uh, but, but, Strangely enough, I always felt extremely at ease uh, with being there and working there. And I always, I, I never felt Bergman's presence as being a, a, th a threat or some, I mean, I, maybe I, I, I imagined a, my, a story with him that is totally, but that protected me, but it's something that I, you know, that I did in order to protect myself, in order to write this film. But, he was always like a, a bienveillant. Uh, well-meaning. Well-meaning uh, shadow to me. Like he was like this big tree uh, and I could be under his shadow. That's the way I felt about Bergman's presence. I, 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 I was never in some kind of uh, uh, rivalry. 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 Rivalry with him. Maybe it's thanks to the fact that I'm a woman, that I made only a few films, that I don't compare myself seriously with Bergman. So I don't have that problem where I would be like, who am I? Like, I, I, I don't even, you know, seriously try to be in this kind of comparison. So, so that, that probably helped me. Maybe, maybe if I had been a Swedish director, it would have been harder, for instance. I don't know if I could do that. If, if I could have done that with a French director, maybe the fact that he was Swedish, that I'm French, that, I, that it was a long trip to go there, gave me more freedom in my approach to his work and, and his places. But no, it's actually a place where I felt, I, I, I've never felt as free, as, as um, liberated that I did when I, was, um, when I was there. And I do love his work, and I do. I mean, I, I admire his work immensely, and he means so much to me. And it keeps. I keep watching his films over and over. Even now, when after I made this film, I'm not even. I can't get rid of it, you know. But uh, it was never. To me, the island was always an extremely um, welcoming place. Thanks also to the fact that the people were welcoming. They were, were coming to me. They were happy that we were going to make a film, and that there was something happening, you know, that, that it was connected to Bergman, but it was also connected to the present. It was a quite young director making a film today with actors, and, and, and they were extremely generous to us. That also, I'm sure, has helped me uh, not be, not, not, not to feel too intimidated by Bergman's uh, heritage. Maybe in a way, I think it's maybe your funniest film. Um, Sorry, it's your funniest film. It's the one that Maybe the most obvious humor, uh, so it's doubly ironic, but that would be about one I know it's the most, uh, you know, joy. I mean, there's, there's some joy in your previous film, but like this one is like really all jokes and, uh, and the lighter side to it, too. Um, do you really, yeah, it's very interesting you say that because I found it very, also quite sad. And I, I remember crying for like. Oh, I cried a long time. Yeah, and I wonder if it's. You know, when things are like the lightest and they're also, you know what I mean? Like maybe it's the funniest because it's also the saddest or like the closest to some kind of really deep, deeper thing, you know? So 
So does that, that, that helps to, you like to laugh about things that are actually sad. Yeah. But uh, I think I have one last question, uh, and then we can move into the movie. You have a film within the film, uh, and it's always something that I find really interesting when an artist has to recreate the work they're doing. You know, it could be like a painter from, you know, or a musician. So you have a, a filmmaker who's doing a film, but you have to show the film, and you have, don't know if you can make it as good as your own work as the film within the film should be like yours, or could be completely different. But the one, the film, in the film, with um, Joseph and, and, and Amy, it's also quite reminiscent of uh, the bike of first class. Um, and, but in a, in a different way, there's like uh, the earthquake of, of the love, is just like it's bad song. And even so, it, it's a scene that always happens. It carries through the film and it carries them through the life of the director. Okay. Thank you. Uh, but I think if. Um, I think um, uh, that's. If that's true, it's because um, I think the, the film in the film could actually have been a film itself. I could have made a film that. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I would have done it, but I mean, I, I, it's not like I wanted to make a film in the film, and then I thought, oh, what, what could it be about? And then I, I <laughs> and then I got this idea of making a film that would look like a last chapter of the Biker's Love. No, it's like I, I actually was caring. This film was me too. The film telling the story of Joseph and Amy. I had that that film within me. It's a film I never made, but I could have made it somehow. And that's a film. I, I, I guess I asked myself, just like Chris in the films, like. Is it a film? <laughs> you know, should I do this? And I did that at the end. But so the fact that th this story finds its way to this film and, and ends up being here is not an accident. I mean, it, it's uh, to me it really makes sense. Also because I feel like to, to me this film is some kind of um, um, not an achievement because it sounds pretentious, but I mean it's a. It's a, 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 a Aboutissement? A culmination or an arrival? Of my previous point. films, I mean, this film was only possible because I made the ones I made before, and it's a, I think it's a meditation on what inspiration is for me, uh, on, on, on the creative process, and how you deal with that in a couple where both are writers and this kind of stuff. And so um, the fact that, it, that the story that she's telling that, and that the film reveals is about this impossible. Um, grief of the first love really makes sense because that's at the very heart of my work, I think. I think my third film, with My First Love, which was telling the story of this uh, young uh, girl who is in love with a boy and she can never get over it, even after years are passing and passing and she still stays in love with him and even as she becomes an adult, but then she, she and so that's, that's the fragility that she has, but she, she becomes an architect and she finds a vocation thanks to the fact that she's gone through this um, pain. And I think that film is pretty much like the source of everything I'm doing, actually. So uh, to me, it really makes sense that, that, that in this film, which is a film about what inspiration is for me, that you would have like this last chapter about the goodbye, uh, about the, the first love.